Welcome to Beer and Politics. Today we are going to debunk common pro-gun arguments. Number one, America needs more guns. Actually, America has more guns than any other country in the world. America has more guns than it has people. The problem of gun violence in America is not due to a lack of gun availability. Number two, gun control won't work in America because of our culture. And that's why we can't use gun control laws from other countries as evidence that it may work. Actually, we've seen gun control work in America. Believe it or not, banning or limiting the manufacturing of automatic weapons, as well as the ability to legally possess automatic weapons, significantly cut down on their ownership and use in crimes. Additionally, if you believe we can't use gun control laws in other countries as evidence, then pro-Second Amendment supporters should not use other countries with lax gun laws as evidence to support their argument. Number three, gun-free zones don't work because criminals target them as there are no deterrents. First, unless you are a criminologist, a professor of criminal science, a law enforcement officer, or a criminal, let's just admit that you don't know anything about criminal behavior and why criminals target any particular victim. Second, we can look at evidence showing that a possession of a gun is not a deterrent to those who wish to kill you with a gun. We need only look at gangs as an example. Two groups of people, both heavily armed, both willing to kill the other, and both not caring at all that their targets are armed. At least not enough not to attempt to kill them and neither caring if any innocents die in the crossfire. Third, while guns may be a deterrent to those who wish to harm you, but not kill you, let's remember that more guns are stolen every year than crimes which are thwarted by the potential victim possessing a gun. And finally, isn't it safe to assume that most public places are gun-free? At the very least, the odds of a mass shooter meeting any real immediate resistance is quite low. Number four, gun laws don't work because criminals don't follow the law. Remember, you don't know anything about criminal behavior. But what you mean is criminals don't follow some laws. Someone who's willing to commit a crime of insider trading probably wouldn't go out of their way to procure a gun if the penalty for having a gun was harsh enough and the process to obtain the gun laborious enough. Additionally, thieves or burglars have different risk tolerances than robbers, as thieves attempt to avoid contact with their victims. The point being, some criminals may be deterred by harsh gun punishments or any laborious process required to obtain a weapon. Number five, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Certainly there are other ways to stop bad guys. There are numerous ways and weapons to help disarm someone with a gun, including your hands. Thanks, Krav Maga. If we are honest, I think we would all agree, the best way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun with the requisite training for the given situation. We call those people law enforcement officers. As we know, improperly trained people with guns significantly increase the likelihood of an accident or can recklessly endanger others. The challenge with the Second Amendment is that it doesn't discriminate between good guys and bad guys. It only ensures guys have guns. So if you're going to tell me that you want good guys to have guns, presumably to stop bad guys, shouldn't you support any legislation that attempts to ensure good guys have guns and prevents bad guys from having guns in the first place? But how will we know who the good guys are? Right, that's the problem. Currently, the law basically identifies you as a bad guy if A, you've committed a felony or domestic violence, or B, you have been involuntarily committed to a mental institution. That's it. What that means is there's a bunch of bad people with bad intentions who have just yet to commit a heinous crime, who have access to guns, because our criteria for good and bad guys is outrageously moronic. That's what reasonable gun control attempts to address. One, limiting the availability of certain weapons to just guys, and two, putting criteria in place to help weed out bad people who have yet to commit a felony, or the mentally ill who shouldn't have access to weapons so that we can better assure that only good guys have guns. You see, it's logic. Finally, this is where the person making the argument for all good guys everywhere tells you that they're a good guy and it's their right. First of all, I don't know that you're a good guy. Secondly, thanks to the intelligence of our founding fathers, whom I know you love quoting, we are able to change this whole right to a gun thing, if we choose to. You're welcome. Until next time, remember, it's just beer and politics.